I didn't know what to expect from the Final Four, and I'm not sure any of the Lady Raiders did either. Well, the Final Four was an unbelievable experience, and uh, you know, there were a lot of people in Atlanta that were supporting it. Tech quickly became the favorites of the Atlanta uh, community. Just the, the buzz and the intensity and the excitement and so many people from Lubbock came to the game. Yes, it was the first Final Four in the history of women's basketball that had ever sold out. Semi-final day, I remember walking outside uh, to just look around the Omni and the atmosphere outside the Omni was just like a men's Final Four. You know you've really arrived as a big time sport when for the first time tickets are being scalped for your event. That's what's been happening here outside the Omni Arena all morning. Scalpers selling women's basketball tickets outside of Lubbock, Texas. I mean, unheard of at a Final Four. They've only been ranked one most of the year, and, and no one really gave us much of a chance to beat them. In, in the arena of athletics, sometimes it is terribly advantageous to be the underdog. There was a calmness about us. There was a, um, you know, we were just taking it in. We were enjoying the journey which is what you always want your players to do. When we walked out on the court and looked behind our bench for our first game and saw the entire section red and black, that was something to, to really behold. We just looked forward. We, we had blinders on and, and went into that first game against Vanderbilt. We had followed the game plan to a tee. Kirkland got some room and hits three. Nine point lead, largest of the game. Scott, good feed for Klinger. Texas Tech from Lubbock, Texas are headed to the championship game. Yeah, we're walking off after we beat Vandy. Coach Rain goes, God dang. I said, what's the matter? He said, God, we got to work tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow afternoon history will be made as Texas Tech will play for their first national title ever. I think everybody who watched the semifinal games knew that Ohio State was going to be a, a more difficult test. And I can remember sitting and watching Ohio State and Iowa play the other semifinal game. And there somebody asked me, who do you want to win? I said, I don't care. I just hope they keep playing. They just need to use their legs up as much as they can for the, for the championship day. I think everybody who watched the semifinal games knew that Ohio State was going to be a, a more difficult test. They had a freshman in Katie Smith who was an amazing basketball player. A lot of people compared her to Larry Bird. They had the best freshman in the country. Really didn't matter because we had the best player in the country. To me, there's no comparison. I'm, you know, there, there's really not. Katie Smith's a great player, but Cheryl just just dominated and, and holds her records. I mean, holds the records for lots of things for the you know NCAA tournament to this day. My focus was, I got to win this game. Mm -hmm. You know, I as as an individual, I've got to do what. I have to do what I'm capable of doing to win this game. Um, not just for myself, but for my teammates and my family in the city of Lubbock. I, I just remember having all these butterflies and, and I was nervous, but it was a good nervousness. Um, and I just remember when, when the buzzer sounded and, and it was tip off time, you know, that was showtime for me. Good afternoon, everyone. Glenn Seal and Bill Seitzler from the Omni in Atlanta, Georgia, and we are getting set for the 1993 Women's National Championship between Texas Tech and Ohio State. You could tell right off the bat, Tech was faster. Tech was beating Ohio State to the spots on the floor where they needed to be. They were getting out and running. They were controlling the tempo. For Katie Smith. The Lady Raiders did a pretty good job of shutting her down. She only scored 28 points, um, which would have tied a record for most points in a national championship game, but Cheryl Swoops bested her. I think Ohio State forgot to factor in Cheryl on that game. Swoops for three over Smith. Take that freshman. She just makes the game look too easy. You always had the feeling that Texas Tech was in control of this game. You, there was never a Oh, oh my gosh, moment. The score itself was not indicative of really how that game was won. I can promise you, at least the last two or three minutes, we, we knew we, we had a W, and it's just kind of maintaining it. Basketball, last time I checked, you simply did one more point than the other team. We had some free throws down the stretch, Krista and I, and uh, it was just like, like I said, it was just like practice, you know, in the women's gym. We just had that mentality. And the pictures of me with our assistant coaches, with Lyndon and Roger, and all the things that were going on that bench. That was while the game was still being played because we knew that it was over. Victory is a two-point margin for the Lady Raiders of Texas Tech. And I'll never forget, I turn around and looked at the clock, I'm like, Tech 
beat Ohio State by two points. I'm like, oh my God, Cheryl, we did it! Texas Tech 84, um, Ohio State 82. And I said, yeah, we did it. We did it. Tears of joy. Um, gosh, it still brings back those tears. It was crazy. You couldn't, there was no frame of reference, so there was no right or wrong way to celebrate, I guess. And jumping up and down and hugging and crying and couldn't believe we just did what we did. The celebration um, in Atlanta was crazy and it was fun and you know being able to experience that with friends and family um, but there was nothing like the, the welcoming we got when we got back home.